Okay, fantastic. This is a good one right here. The Modern Eater. We are on the road in Blackhawk. We are inside the kitchen at the Monarch Chop House. Okay? Monarch Casino and Spa in Blackhawk. Greg Hollenbach, Brian Freeman, Jay Parker here with us. And we have these great chefs taking the time out of their day to cook a little something up for us, Brian. I am excited. I hear cheese of all kinds. You know, I love that. You know, coming over here. I mean, it's a it's a mouthful already, the name, but I want to take some of that because we are at the Monarch Chop House at Monarch Casino Resort and Spa. Good job. Okay. <laughs> Gentlemen, introduce yourselves if you would. Uh, I'm a chef de cuisine at the Chop House. My name is Greg Wiedek. I am uh, Ken Bredesen, the executive chef of the entire property. Oh, my goodness. We got the guys. Mm -hmm. Okay, you guys, what are we going to do here? Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to make a, a dish that's on our menu. It's a beet salad with house-made burrata. Um, so I'm going to kind of take you through making the ricotta, which I've already made. Um, I'm just going to rehydrate that with a little bit of cream and uh, about 10% of the whey that's left over. And then I've got my mozzarella curds here. They're kind of just hanging out in some warm water to bring them up to to te uh, room temperature. Um, and then I'm gonna be making a beet salad with uh, some of these beets right here. I've got some compressed beets um, that are compressed with an apple cider reduction. Um, and then separately here, uh, the golden beets I've got uh, with a little bit of that apple cider reduction and a little bit of lemon zest in there as well. Some dehydrated raspberry, some cashew, and some watercress. So let's go through uh, how to make some burrata, y'all. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. This is a treat to be in the kitchen here at the Monarch Chop House last well, night. The chef was talking about that part of it too. Also, it's funny that you know the preparation for cheese. Um, you know, you can. This is an item you can make fairly quickly, but what takes a little bit of time is heating up the mozzarella so it's pliable and malleable to actually wrap it around the container to actually get the burrata look out of it. While Chef's setting up here, tell us a little bit about the Chop House here. So, um, the concept wise on that part of it is an upscale, uh, we're fine dining, um, steakhouse in here. Um, we focus on Holstein uh, beef that's in here. We're one of the very few in Denver that actually focuses on that particular uh, varietal of uh, cow. Um, very flavorful. Um, we do an aging process in here. Um, it's a wet age, minimum of uh, 28 days. Uh, the process in that part of it is also just to develop flavor into it. Um, and at the same time, too, um, we want to kind of be able to set ourselves apart from what other ones that are actually using the whole scene. So we're doing that wet age aspect of it from there a little bit longer. Usually 21 days is the minimum. We do 28 days plus, and there's what we need to do for April. We have We have a pretty uh, astute audience, but the difference between wet and dry aging. Um, so... Wet, wet age on that part of it basically means that you, you butcher the, the, uh, the, the primal at that point into a subprimal and into actually down to the steak. Um, you vacuum seal it at that point in its own juices. Um, let it sit on that for at least, a, like I said, a minimum typical on the standard is 21 days in there. Um, we go 21 or we go 28 to plus in there, um, depending on the type of steak and if it's a bone in, bone out steak in there. Um, dry age obviously is obviously letting it um, set in a um, exposed um, air um, under a controlled temperature. Um, usually a lot of times you'll, you'll see a lot of times um, salt blocks, Himalayan salt blocks are in there to actually keep the moisture content in the room very close in there. But you'll actually see some, they consider the, the, I call it the good mold that develops on the outside of it, that actually starts pulling the moisture out of the meat, um, actually resonates it um, and creates a very um, flavorful but gamey flavor into that part of it in there. A lot of people that tend to eat uh, steaks in there, if they don't know dry age in there, are going to be put off by it because the color is going to change. It's going to become very dark burgundy versus a bright red color into it. My experience sitting at the bar last night, and I had the beef tips, by the way, and a old-fashioned and a Manhattan. Don't hold it again. <laughs> <laughs> All fantastic. And the dipping sauces, the Bernays, and you had a chimichurro. What was the other one that you had? Uh, the other one's a mushroom demi. Oh, yep. my goodness. It was all delicious, you guys. But when you look at your menus, and this is an all-inclusive restaurant mm -hmm. where you can internationally come from all over the world and still read your menu, as well as these beautiful fold-open menus, your menu's very refined mm -hmm. at this point. So what we try to do in there is to make it very elegant, but clean. Not overly complicated, not hard to read. Um, I've seen in the past, not part of it, you've seen menus that are have five, six pages long in there. Mm -hmm. To me, it concerns me when you see a restaurant with that many pages in the menu, can they do everything fresh in the kitchen in there? At that point, you're compromising quality, and that's not what we do here. I want to focus on the locally sourced, if we can get product in there that way, focus on the quality and how we produce it. 
um, so that way the guest gets the essence of what the food is supposed to be about. And I think that, again, almost comes back to the, the, um, the reference of farm to table back in the 90s, of the whole thing of really trying to connect to what the food's originally supposed to taste like, not what the processing process of it, of making food to make it more edible and changing it and manipulating it that way. I think the chef should be doing that part of it. It shouldn't come from there that already manipulated. Perfect. Couldn't say it better myself. Yep. Reagan, let me ask him because you, you said something that was really interesting to me. Mm -hmm. You're using Holstein. Mm -hmm. What made you choose that? Because that is not necessarily your, your normal... Uh, uh, I would say we probably uh, tasted <laughs> about, I want to say, probably 50 different cuts. Yeah. Um, and across the board, um, with, I'd say with the exception of, I had a little bit more of a tendency to lean towards the Angus for the, uh, the, the top or the, uh, the top round, top or the, round. sorry, no, not the top round, the, uh, the, the, the strip, okay. the strip just had a little bit more flavor. Uh, however, Holstein, um, across the board, other than that, I thought was extremely flavorful, more juicy. It had, uh, it had better texture in the mouth. I felt like, um, and I mean, when you get. 12 people in a room, everyone in a blind tasting, 90% says the same thing. You kind of think that that might be what we should, yeah. we should use it. And on top of that, um, I think it's just a, it's a good product. Um, it's good, flavorful. The, the and consistency is everything. Yeah, yeah, when yeah. someone comes in to, to the chop house, mm -hmm. you definitely want to go, I've had that before. I know I'm going to love it and it's going to turn out the same way again. Well, at the same time too, you think about a steakhouse, right? Everybody who comes in the steakhouse, 90% of people coming in here are looking for steak on a plate. So you've got a very small opportunity in a, in a very small criteria of, of food to make your mark. So it has to be great if you're, gonna, if you're gonna, truly going to call yourself a fine dining steakhouse in here. So the steak has to be the featurette from there. I mean, there's things you can add to it. And I've seen places that do certain things where they add a lot of sauces and a lot of accoutrements on the side of it from there. And the problem that it is, is that when you eat the steak, you're like, okay, but it tastes like everything else that's out there. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think what Greg was talking about is the fact that we really tasted that steak and said, wow, the steak by itself, set alone, is amazing. Anything else we do to it from there is going to make it even better at that point. Yep. Um, but again, center plate kind of feel to it is what we're really trying to focus on instead of just giving him a lot of things for a value driven in there, letting the steak stand for itself. Had an opportunity to catch up with Daniel yesterday and walk the dining room and just look at the nuances of how beautiful it is. Um, the tie-ins, it all has to come together at that one aha moment that that is what fine dining is. And we've just seen it go away from fine dining. It's going to be a huge resurgence. I really think the Roaring Twenties are going to come up again as well. I'm hoping. But to be ready for that. <laughs> Chef, you're firing the hole right now. Please describe the play-by-play. -play. Yeah, so a couple of things that I've been doing uh, while Ken's been talking to him over there. Uh, the Mott's, I basically got to a uh, nice stretchable consistency. And then I consider it, uh, or I compare it to like kneading dough and strengthening the mozzarella. Um, so I kind of have been working it, folding it on itself until it's nice and uh, stretchable, not tearing, and almost paper thin membrane there. Consistency, yeah. Um, so then over here, I'm just going to add a little bit of extra virgin olive oil to this bowl right here. Whoop. Fill it up, and then I'm going to get some of our pre-made ricotta. Oh, jeez. So with the ricotta, which I like to describe as, when I was making this earlier, I wanted to say it, but... When you make the ricotta, your curds are so dry and you need to rehydrate them. You, you can use whey. I use heavy cream because I think it gives a more creamy mouthfeel. But when you're rehydrating, you got to think like these thirds are cursed. They, these curds are thirsty. Yes. And you need to like get them in there so they're nice and creamy. Yes. Um, so I've got my nice creamy curds now going into the burrata here. Um, and then I'm just going to trim off the excess here to make it a nice thin membrane on the outside. So I think the thing too as well, that it get in a good burrata in there, even at room temperature, you should be able to cut into it and it kind of oozes a little bit in there. Mm -hmm. I mean, Chef's talking about if you do it too dry, it becomes almost chalky to the mouthfeel and it doesn't get that effect that you're going to like that nice oozing effect that's more palatable to the, uh, the palate as well. So the Yeah, so we just got the uh, burrata done right here. So I'm going to go ahead and start up on the actual plate up of the salad here. Uh, I'm going to start with uh, apple. We're just going to do some nice thin cuts on this. So we picked Granny Smith as well too. Obviously, the acidity level onto it, crispness of the apple, color's really nice and bright in there as well. Um, obviously too, when you go into the winter seasons, fruit becomes very limited as far as what's available in there. This is an item that you get, again, consistently wise, 
will be nice and firm. Um, you won't worry about ripeness in that part of it from there. And also with the balance of what he's got flavors in there, I think it really, really goes well and, and accents the, the beats that are in there as well. Mm. So as we focused a little bit on partnerships, uh, the Modern Eater, we love local partnerships. Mm -hmm. And we look around the kitchen, we see uh, the Talco food products mm -hmm. and other, any other partnerships that you think are uh, worth We use a lot actually. Um, bread that we currently right now, we use Breadworks, um, um, local bakery and up in the area here. So we do almost all the property bake, uh, bakery items in there that way. Um, we also use um, some of the uh, Gold Canyon is one of our uh, providers for some of our beef, for especially our ground beef down in the 24-7 that we use as well. Um, so we really try to focus on, one, I came from Michigan before I came into this property. Um, and for me, it was all about locally sourcing stuff in there because I, in that area, Detroit area, in that part of it, it was all about local support. And I think the feel of trying to help the local business person in there, they're also going to be associated and trying to give you the specialized treatment and service that you're looking for versus large distributors will get you what you need, but in a volume driven aspect where I can get small individual items in there and make it to my own and make my property my own without actually having to buy bulk products that are everybody else so I can get out there too. Mm. That's nice too because it differentiates you mm -hmm. in certain aspects where you really can shine. And it helps the chef too give a, a, an idea at that point that he's not limited to or he or she's not limited to just to be able to what they can get in. They can create from the beginning at that point and saying, hey, I want a sausage, but this is the flavor profile I want. This is the casing I want. This is the grind I want in here. Versus going and saying, oh, this is the variety of the that, that we have available out there. This, and then you have to work backwards going work from there too. Making, so it does make it nice. Making this plate look beautiful and delicious. Walk us through this plating process, Chef. Um, yeah, so I definitely like to play around with platings. Um, the texture of the beets, you know, is, is pretty, I want to say it's it's like a little bit al dente. Um, they get roasted, they get compressed, they get marinated for at least two days before we actually serve them so that they get that nice flavorful juice in there. Um, and then the thin, uh, thin slice of the golden beet, um, it has so much of that flavor in there that you, I mean, a thin, sl uh, thin sliver of it gives you a nice bang. Um, and then I'm just going to finish it with a little bit of cashew just for some more fattiness and some more sweetness. Mm -hmm. And then same thing with the raspberries. I think the nice thing with the beets as well, too, is as you taste between of them, the texture changes, too. The red beet that's in there, the compressed one, has almost, when you the mouthfeel, it's very smooth and velvety, where the, the golden beet tends to be a little harsher, almost like a radish kind of feel to it from there. So that's what he's saying, in it, but it also has a very punch and flavor in there. So I think the way he does the chunk, it's got the, more of the beet flavor into it, and the flowered uh, golden radish in there kind of brightens it up every time you eat. And as you eat one and the other one, it brightens your palate each time. Cool. And then I'm just going to do a little... Let's see if I can find a spoon here. Attention down to the plate. How I, mean, I always do a little. I always do a little dimple, dimple on top of the the burrata there to catch a little bit of the oil. Oh, perfect. And I also do a little bit of mint oil on here as well, just to give it a little bit more of the refreshing flavor. Let's get a little bit better. On Greg, don't you love it when it looks so good you almost don't want to eat it? <laughs> <laughs> like an artistic type thing in there. It yes. really is. That should do it on that plate there and there it is this is where it's always photo time for me mm -hmm. because that's when you want to really keep that memory and that's where memories are and mm -hmm. uh at the monarch chop house you guys this is absolutely a fantastic dish how many of these would you do on any given night and are they all done by order Can oh they're absolutely done by order um but i mean i would say this is probably we'll do like five of these a night but that's because we're under the limited capacity. Sure. We're only allowed to have about 40 people in the room at any given time. We're really hoping, you know, as a new restaurant, we can open up more as the restrictions start to loosen up. Um, that's not our call. <laughs> <laughs> we are definitely abiding by all the restrictions, if not even more so, mm -hmm. um, which is, you know, it's a, been a blessing and a curse. We opened up last month. Um, you know, every time you open up a restaurant, this is my fourth restaurant, uh, it's, full steam ahead no looking back every day is a new day it's a new struggle and it's so busy all the time here it was like that for our grand opening and then it was like well now we have to you know push back push on the brakes a little bit and actually see what this reality is of cooking oh. with you know basically i, I want to say like a third of what we would normally do on a night mm -hmm. um so we haven't really gotten there but it's definitely given our team a chance to you know perfect this dish perfect cooking steaks on the grill you know, we, we've got a good dance in the kitchen now with everybody. Everyone knows each other's moves. So we really just want to open the doors to everyone so they can enjoy all this food because, you know, 
we've had time to perfect it now. Yep. <laughs> and, and it's the rhythm. The rhythm is everything, especially dining like this. Don't take our word for it. It's in Blackhawk. It's just right up the hill or um, anywhere in Colorado. Very easy access. But Monarch Casino Resort Spa in Blackhawk. Chefs, thanks for letting us catch up with you here today. Yeah. Uh, this dish is going to be on my list for today. Good. <laughs> and it, don't take our word for it. Come on up here and see them. The dining room is beautiful. Make reservations. And these are the guys that will be back here making this delicious food for you. Thanks again for your time. Yeah, Thank you. I Come appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right. We'll see you. We're going to um, check out a couple more things. We're going to end this one right now. And we'll be back. The Modern Eater Show continues. <laughs> I love the laugh. <laughs> like right now? Yeah. <laughs> hey, everybody. It's Kyle Mindenhall. I'm talking with uh, my good friends from the Modern Eaters show. Keep supporting them. There's a lot of good stuff happening. We started Meridium Spirits because we love the way that spirits and cocktails can bring people together to socialize, to bond, to have conversations. Well, right now we've got some big conversations to have. Coop Vodka and Coop Gin are available at liquor stores across the metro area, but if you can't find us or would like to have us behind your bar or at your restaurant, send us an email, info at meridiumspirits.com. We know things are a little different these days, but think of us the next time you're planning a virtual happy hour or a socially distant picnic. And keep an eye on our social media, Coop by Meridium, for all the latest and greatest. Hey guys, it's Caroline Glover. I'm the chef owner of Annette out at Stanley Marketplace. Citrus is about to be in its prime. I just want to thank everybody for showing so much support to small local restaurants in this really hard time and you're watching The Modern Eater Show. <laughs> I'm fine with that. Hi, I'm Amber with Strohauer Farms, and I'm just here to remind you that the best potatoes are grown here in Colorado. Goodness elevated. Thanks for watching The Modern Eater Show. <laughs> hey, Zach Ryder here, Colorado Mills Sunflower Products out of Lamar, Colorado, your only local source grown from a local crop to produce a local oil for local chefs. You can find it at Shamrock Foods, What Chefs Want, Seattle Fish Company. Uh, let me try it one more time, then we'll see. Hey, restaurants, we're glad you're reopening from Colorado Mills Sunflower Oil. We'll see you soon. <laughs> First, we partner with the best farmers in the world, and then we tell them, we will take it all. Process whole spices daily, blend custom spices to order, keep it fresh, safe, and flavorful, all so that you can get back to doing what you do best. So whether you're a restaurant, a food manufacturer, or an at-home cook, be sure to visit The Spice Guy at www.thespiceguyco.com. Hey, Modern Eater fans. I'm Don Trobo with The Annex by Art at Mills, and I just wanted to give you a heads up about some of the great things we've got going on locally in the state. We're headquartered right here, and we're working with farmers in the San Luis Valley to bring you amazing Colorado quinoa. It's just like the South American stuff, but grown locally. We've got transitional wheat flour that's grown by farmers in Colorado and surrounding states who are in the process of, of turning their fields into organic. So we're taking that transitional wheat and turning it into flour, and now it's available for you to cook and bake with. And last but not least, we're now cleaning grain berries in Denver. So things like spelt or wheat berries uh, or pearl barley, those are things that we're now doing right here locally and are available to you. Can't wait to share it with you. <laughs> Hi, 
I'm Jeff Nations from Aspen Baking Company. It's really important right now to support local. That's why I support the Modern Eater. Now, back to the show. Okay, we continue right here, the Monarch Casino Resort Spa in Blackcock. Chef Ken Bredesen, here we go again. It's burger time. Tell us yes, where we're sir. at, sir. So we're in 24-7. This is our 24-7 uh, uh, diner that's in here. It's actually named 24-7. Um, the unique thing about this kitchen is, is one, it never shuts down. Um, second thing is the availability and the, um, there's five expo stations in this kitchen. So there's one on the breakfast, one on the uh, burger grill, there's one for Asian station, one for saute, and one for the pizza station. So the kitchen in here is constantly running, running all the time. Even on slow times, there's always something going on in here. And every kitchen needs a great burger. Mm -hmm. Here it is. What's this burger? What, and your so inspiration we're, we're gonna, with it. We're going to make is we call it the Mount Massive. So all of our burgers are named after locations in Colorado right now. Um, it's two eight-ounce Black Angus patties in here, um, locally sourced from uh, Gold Canyon. And we're going to just basically do let the meat stand for itself, do a basic seasoning onto it, grill it. We're going to use the Breadworks uh, locally sourced bakery buns in here. They're a potato and brioche bun. Very nice and soft in there. So if you're be be definitely a uh, burger smasher to eat it in there, that's an awesome way to eat it too. And you're going to have to with that much meat on the, bur the bun. All right, let's get going. All right, so I've got my two burger patties, two eight ounce patties that are in here. I'm just going to do a little bit of seasoning in here. So again, always season both sides in there. I'm going to do a little bit of butter. Put that down. And again, this kitchen is live, so we're, even right now, we got tickets ringing in right now. This, this one, when we first opened, only seats 150 people in here. We were doing over 1,000 covers a night in here when we first opened. Truly impressive, Brian, and the magnitude yeah. of this kitchen. They keep it cranking all day long, every day long. Just amazing. We see, even when it's slow like this, it's a machine back here. Mm -hmm. It's great to watch. And it has to be. The way that the stations are set up, um, the folks on the stations, everything's built for consistency and speed, isn't it, Chef? Absolutely. I mean, our ticket times, we try to keep our ticket times under 15 minutes for a service and when they ring them in. So you got close to 80 items on the menu in here. At any given time, we do breakfast all day in here as well, too. So kitchen's big. Fresh food coming out constantly all the time out of here, all the time. So you can come in at 2 o'clock in the morning and you can get a uh, pancakes and you can get a biscuits and gravy if you want to, or you can get a sirloin, you can get a uh, strip steak with french fries if you want to as well. Unbelievable. Okay? So what we're doing is we're going to cook these to medium in here. I just toast the buns a little bit. I like a little texture on there. That way when you go to kind of put there, the juices absorb a little bit into the bun, but don't cause them to break down. Um, so what we're also going to do is we're going to throw a little bit of the, uh, I got some mushrooms and some uh, nice sauteed onions in there. We're going to heat up. Greg, you're not seeing that anything wrong with this, are you? Yeah, at no, all. nothing at all. I want this burger right now. <sighs> so basically what we kind of thought of is, again, taking really nice, good, standard diner food and bringing it up to the next level. Um, we did that basically with making sure we source really great products in there. Um, at the same time, too, how we prepare them so that the guest gets what's expected on the menu. We're not talking and, and, and putting something on the menu that we can't deliver in there. So even a good burger, to me, should be cooked well, should be seasoned well, should have a good platform for it to go on, so a good bun for it to go on there. And then from there, whatever, the sky's the limit on whatever you want on the burger in there. Um, we do a lot of burgers in there too as well that we do a build order kind of feel in there where we'll come in, our Pikes Peak is our basic one in there, um, and they can add things to it if they want to from there. So guests will come in and say, hey, can I get bacon on this? Which we also locally source the bacon as well too that's in here. We do a nice habanero bacon that's in here. It's cured habanero bacon here. So you get some heat, some crunch, some saltiness in there that adds amazing with some of those burgers that we do as well. Um, we also do a bison burger in here too called the Cheap Hosa. Um, that burger is amazing because bison is very lean in there but it's got blue cheese on the top of it. It's got wing sauce with it as well too. Um, you got some pickled uh, celery on top. So it's almost like a wing and a burger mixed together, but the bison burger has so much flavor inside in there and it doesn't shrink much. So you get a lot of substantial uh, meat on the burger because it being so lean in there. It's a really, really good burger too. Also, if you wouldn't mind while we're doing this, talk about your buffet and the hours of operation and what takes to pull that operation. So, we just opened it this last week, yeah. um, it opened on Sunday. We are still living in operation, so we're open Sunday through Thursday. Um, we open from at four and we're open until nine, so we're open for dinner in there. Um, that buffet right now, um, close to 65 pan items you can get in there. Um, we do everything from a walk station 
that we make the food fresh for the front line. We have a Mongolian grill that you can make to order stuff in there. You have chefs at every station, don't every you? Every station it's on How there. many chefs are in there? Uh, currently right now we have six chefs running that operation in That's there. That's fantastic. Um, all the way down the line. You can even get cotton candy. We do cotton candy in there as well too. So cotton candy fountain, chocolate fountain in there. We brulee to order uh, creme brulees that are inside there, pot, chocolate pot to creme in there. So it's not a typical buffet in there. Um, it's basically like you sit down and you get the choice of like five different restaurants when you sit down and eat each time. And that's everybody's treated like a VIP here. Everybody, Walmart, everybody, right? everybody. That's really what we try to focus on. And my mantra for when I came here was really focusing on, we do it, we, we do things in quality is what we do in here. We don't try to compromise anything. We try to make sure the best products are out there. We also try to make sure that we train our people properly which again, we're always looking for good talent out there as well too. We have a lot of operations in here, a lot of availability as far as internet is trying to get people in here as well. Some people put the iron on their burgers. On I don't do that, it kills the burger. I agree. To me, pressing it down. The only thing I do initially when I start it yeah. is I'll press the burger down on the flat top, yeah. it sears it to the bottom so it stops getting that cupping action. Yeah. Um, because what'll happen if you do don't do that yeah, in there? You want to retain all yeah. the juices. You also too, you want the caramelization, the Maillard effect that needs to happen in there. Uh -huh. That's where the flavor of the meat comes from, that caramelization. And if you don't get good contact surface on the on the grill from there, because it cups up, one side will have a lot of uh, caramelization, the other one won't. And to me, it also causes an uneven cook. So sometimes you'll get a really raw center, and then you'll get the outside that'll be a little overdone because that's all it's touching on the outside from there. Chef, what's your opinion of the best temperature to cook a burger? To me. I'm an old school kind of guy, even though ground beef has always been one of those things that everybody talks about, oh, apprehensive is because it's a ground beef in there. Cook it up to at least one, 145 to 155 in there, depending on the type of ground in there. I'm a mid-rare guy. I like the taste of the meat. Uh, medium, I think, is, is what most people get in there. Um, Mid-well and above to me, at that point, you just kind of, it, it's, it's meat, but it doesn't taste like it anymore. It's, I think you lose all the flavor because all the fat gets cooked out of it, all the flavor's gone out of it. Um, the only place I've ever seen that's actually kind of done that thing in there is people that do smash burgers and flatten them out from there because it cooks so quickly in there that they didn't have a really a chance for the fat to, to release out of there or the flavor to release out of it. I didn't decide to do smash burgers in here because I wanted a nice substantial burger in there so when you get it, you see exactly what you're paying for. Nice. nice. This is coming together nicely. Uh, Restaurant Tour once told us in order to have a very, very successful uh, casual food restaurant, you need three things and you need to do them well. Burger, taco, pizza. Is there anything to that? I can tell you right now, the only thing that we're really missing out of here is the tacos. We do nachos in here, but we do nachos out of the droves in here. On the, at, on, at night, you'd see almost every ticket, there's at least one to two orders of nachos coming out here. Um, our new, we're actually th talking about probably mid-March or so in there, looking at revamping the menu. So it'll give us about three and a half, four months of actually the current menu here to make some adjustments and definitely Latino food is definitely going to be on there. I had a pizza last night. The dough is delicious on that pizza. Mm -hmm. I think the, the thing with it, what we focus on there is one, I make sure that the bottom of the, the crust is coated with semolina. Uh -huh. So when you hit the, the stone deck that we bake it into it from there, um, it allows it one to get a little aeration and separation so it doesn't seal to the bottom of the stone. Um, also, too, I like the taste and the texture. Similarly, the toast on the bottom gets a little nutty flavor in there, and also when you bite into it, you get a little crunch, an additional crunch that happens in there. The that, to me, I think it really enhances the pizza. The so voice of Chef for me. Ken Bredesen. Uh, walk us through right here all of these delicious ingredients. So what we're working with is, is basically each of the stations is set up to about 10 to 15 items that are going to be made on the menu in there, depending on it. So you got everything from like a pineapple and uh, red cabbage slaw that goes on our torta, fish torta that's on there. The uh, guacamole that we make from scratch in here that also goes on there as well. We have a um, crema feta that goes with our calamari that we offer in here. So it's a feta cheese cream mixture in there that we dip into it from there. We have a uh, chipotle mayo that finishes on a lot of our burgers, including the torta. El tops, we have uh, pickled celery, it's in here, blue cheese, uh, queso fresco, hawaka cheese in here, um, herbs, microgreens that we offer in here, so a mixed a blend of um, arugula or, and or spring mix that's in there too. So we try to make it to where it's not just, a, even in the burgers and our sandwiches, not just a standard piece of iceberg lettuce on there. If it is, it's very crisp and make sure it's very fresh in there, but we try to mix it up so that you get a little different flavors and combination in there too. All right, Chef, give us the play-by-play. -play. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna melt the cheese on top of here. So with two burgers, I got two, two slices of cheese on here. You gotta have it kind of oozing out a little bit here. We're gonna build this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do kind of like a, I call it the, um, the meat foy of a burger in here. So it's a layered aspect in there. 
So you do your burger, cheese, filling, burger, cheese, filling again, top of there, okay? And I thought you were making two burgers, <laughs> Chef. This well, is you'll all... feel like it is. Woo! So we're gonna go down. And I just wanna load that up on top there. We're gonna set that on the plate. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Then we're gonna go a second time again with the burger patty. The burger's insane, it's insane. And to me, a good burger on that part of it should just fall out everywhere in there. I mean, you should see ingredients coming out all over the place in there. Tell me that doesn't look good. And then we're finishing off with a uh, over easy egg. Let's put it on there, chef. Over easy egg. And we're gonna finish off with our, we call it our secret sauce that's in here. I only put this on the top because again, all the juices from the burger on the bottom are gonna soften that bottom of that bun. So you wanna have that balance between the burger and the bun so it doesn't get soggy in there. And we also, the thing we do is, we never top our burger. We set it on the side, cascading off the side. Because if you want to add more to it, if you want to cut it in half, if you just, I want to see, the, I want them to see the ingredients instead of hiding it underneath the bun. Yeah. So a lot of our burgers, we make sure that you can see the entire top of it coming all the way down there. And you want the guests to deal with the yolk. Yeah. I and mean, that's part of the fun. It is. If they want to puncture at the beginning or if they want to try to manhandle it and just yeah. squeeze it and have it ooze out at the same time, that's the fun part of food. Or if they're like me and want to take a picture and they need that perfect <laughs> aha moment. Exactly. <laughs> that's where you get it. Oh, tell us the name of that burger again, So this Jeff. is our Mount Massive. Um, again, like I said, we listed all our burgers on the menu on here with locations in Colorado, um, either peaks in the, the uh, mountains or in locations in the Colorado area. When you're visiting the best, you can expect the best mm -hmm. and the very best right here. Chef Ken Bredesen, thank you for your time today. I really appreciate it. I appreciate it. it. Thank you guys for coming out. You bet. Mm -hmm. There it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, Thank Brian. you, Chef. That was what, an stuff. what a great experience, Greg. And is there anything on there that you wouldn't want on your burger right now? <laughs> no, I want double right there. I know, don't you? That's great. Okay, we're going to wrap it up right here 24-7. It's in Blackhawk. It is Monarch Casino Resort Spa in Blackhawk. Come on up. See for yourself. Go get this burger. It's on the menu waiting for you. Okay, the Modern Eater Show will continue. Hey. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? This is Brother Luck from Lucky Dumpling, 4 by Brother Luck in Colorado Springs, and I am rocking with the Modern Eater. You're watching them, you're tasting them, you're knowing everything there is to know about Colorado. <laughs> Hi, Charlie from Brews Beers here. Our new Belgian Abbey 4-pack is a mixed package of the four core beers made in Abbey and Trappist breweries in Belgium. So we have a single, a double, a triple, and a quadruple in one package. Now, quadruples are the emperors of Belgian monastery ales. They're dark in color uh, with a dense tan head and alcohol ranging from 8 to 12%. So they're pretty strong. Quadruples are very rich and complex with big maltiness, uh, spice, and flavors of raisins, cherries, and plums. Alcohol is apparent in the mouthfeel, but not overwhelming. Uh, even at 10.5% ABV. So the finish is long, complex, and dry, and they're great beers anytime, by themselves or with hearty foods. Pick up your Abbey 4 pack at either Brews location, 67th and Pencos, or at Colfax and York, and at fine liquor stores throughout the Denver metro area. Take home some Belgian style badassery today. Watching the Modern Eater, and now back to the show. Hey, you guys, Jay here with the Modern Eater Show. Thanks for watching. Don't forget about our YouTube and Instagram channels. A lot of killer content over there. Throw us a subscribe on YouTube, throw us a follow on Instagram, and thank you for supporting TME. We couldn't do this without our amazing sponsors, so let's check them out right now. Very proud to be part of the, the Modern Eater and uh, chefs, restaurant owners, any food service operators. 
You know, I know right now that uh, delivery and carry out is bigger than ever, and we got you covered. Uh, Cambro uh, has a full line of uh, delivery and carry out items. More economical options are expanded polypropylene or EPP, a uh, nice insulated container. Uh, the ProCard Ultra is really versatile. It's a great unit because you can actually store cold products down here, hot products up here. It's all 120. There's no refrigeration worries. It's all thermodynamics. Just let us know what your food service challenges are, what it is we can do to help you out, and there isn't anything that we can't do for you. So uh, hope to see you over here at our facility in Park Hill soon and uh, stay safe out there. You know everybody, with several million dollars of hard assets here, insurance is very, very important to us. Ewing Levitt covers it all. Machinery, building, workman's comp. Ewing Levitt's got us covered from the floor to the ceiling, from our alley, even to the street. This divider, this press, my cooling conveyor, my oven. Ow, ow! Ewing Levitt covers our counter stacker and our employees too. If you need insurance, take it from Little Rich at Rockalitas. Call Ewing Levitt, they'll get you covered. I go home, I strip down to my skivvies. All right, here we go. I got it, I got it, I got it. Hey everybody, Steve Gould from Golden Moon Distillery and Golden Moon Speakeasy. When I get my cocktails to go from Golden Moon Speakeasy, I go home, I kick back, and I watch The Modern Eater. <laughs> skivvies. Hey, I'm a Marine. It's skivvies, man. It's a beautiful day in Blackhawk at the Monarch Casino Resort Spa. Greg Hollenbach, Brian Freeman, and our new friend Leanne. We need a margarita. All right, sounds good. I'll what be happy to make you one. First of all, the name of it, and then walk us through it, if you would. All right, so this is Leanne's signature margarita. And we have a lot of people that come weekly and come see me and come get a margarita from me, so I'll show you exactly how I make it. So first, we're going to start with Patron. That's the best tequila for me to use in a margarita. And let me get this little shot glass here. I'm going to add it to my to my glass right here that already has some little bit of orange juice, a little bit of Sprite, a lot of sweet and sour. So I'm gonna shake that up here. Try not to splash myself too much. And then pour that in this glass. Fill her up. Leave a little bit of space at the top there for a floater of Grand Marnier because that's the best way to enjoy a margarita. And now we have one for the both of you. That's fantastic. Come on up and get, enjoy yourself a margarita, right? Ah, uh, yeah. If it's just for the margarita and nothing else, come <laughs> and see Leanne. Come and see me for a signature margarita. Um, Beautiful wonderful. property, great state. Leanne, you've been here for about eight years now? I've been here for eight and a half years now. I love it here. I love the team members. I love the guests. I love the beautiful atmosphere. We have state-of-the-art machines here. And I just enjoy coming to work every day. That's a Monarch Casino Resort Spa in Blackhawk. It's called a staycation for me. Come on up from Denver. It's a short drive away, and you get to see a smiling face like Leanne's underneath the mask. Underneath the mask, but you already know I'm smiling. Thanks, Leanne. Thank yeah. you. Don't forget to book the spa massage. Don't forget, and come get a margarita.